the same thing this does, but this thing here will actually charge the battery if it's low. I'm going to hook up the end plate here. This has two end clamps. This one's for your larger application because the opening is larger. If you're using it on a smaller vehicle, you would use the smaller end clamp. It'd probably be more accurate. That makes sense? Smaller cables, smaller end clamp. Big cables, big end clamp. All right? So I've unwind this here. Try not to drop this. This is probably a two, three hundred dollar item. Similar as that uh, end clamp that we use with the fluke. It's three hundred fifty bucks. So be careful when you're using it, if you would, all right? So this tool, it does a lot of the same things this does. So we connect it by hooking up the large leads here. Right. Hook it on the battery, like so. And if, how many of you have used an old snap-on scan tool, the snap-on 2500 scan tool with the scroll wheel? Have you used that before? This, this operates on that, that setup. You scroll to get the things to change up here and it has a yes and no. All right? So this thing will do a, a system test, and a system test is testing all, all the systems, the battery, the starting, and the charging. So if you want to run through and check them all, you do a system test. If you want to do an individual test, like do an only a battery test, or only a starting test, or only a charging test, then you would pick individual. And it basically you follow the directions and it does the test for you. All right. So I'm gonna pick individual because I, I want to talk about them as I go through. So pick individual, hit yes, and we'll do a battery test. I'll hit yes there. The other options are starter test and alternator test. But I'm gonna pick battery test. Hit yes. It asked me, is it a conventional battery or an AGM battery? Again, what was AGM stand for? Absorb glass mat. Uh, is this likely to be an absorbed glass mat battery? No. It's, a, it's a conventional flooded lead battery. Okay? So we hit conventional. And it asks, are we going to do it in vehicle or out of vehicle? Another thing it asks, is it a multiple battery test? That's the good thing about this tester. If you've got a battery pack of two or three or four batteries, you tell it and it'll, it'll test all those batteries. Okay? We're just a single vehicle in vehicle test, single battery in vehicle test. Then you got to tell the CCA of the battery. How many CCAs was it? So it's at 650 right now, so I scroll up to 950. And yes. So now it's doing the test. Okay? So it's measuring the impedance of the battery. Now you don't have to tell it anything. It's, it's going to run through and, and uh, Leave the connection fall, I guess, and we start low tech. So it knows I've got a bad connection here. Let's reset it. Alright. So it says leave connection fall, yes to restart low tech. Yes. All I really had to do is tell me tell how many CCAs it had, then it's going to basically walk you through there. So you don't really have to know as much to use this tool as you did use this tool. This, this tool has some logic built into it, where this one, you kind of have to tell it more things. So it's running the load test. We'll give it a couple of seconds here. Give us the results. It's running its second load test in this series. This tool kind of takes some of the control out of your hands. With this tool here, if you know your what your specs and everything are, then you tell it, you run the test, and you interpret that. This tool does some of the interpretation for you. Okay, it says the battery test has passed. Battery is low on charge. 
and it says automatic charging will begin in automatically in two, one, zero seconds. Now it's charging the battery. So it takes some of the control out of your hands. It, it, it senses that the battery level is low. So, that, hey, if the battery level is low, what do I need to do? I've got a charger built in. I'm going to charge the battery. Okay? So it's going to sit there and charge until that battery comes up to full charge, which is good. You know, if I'm on a, in a shop or I'm fixing vehicles, you know, having a tool that can do that, you can walk away and do something else now. Go take a break or go work on another vehicle or get your parts for the, this vehicle. Okay? Now I'm not going to let it charge there because I'm going to show you the rest of the functionality of this tool. So that's how we can do a battery test. I'm going to hit no here. I can print if I want to and print my results. We go back. Keep going back until I go to starter test. The next thing is a starter test. So you scroll down, hit starter test, yes. You want to do a normal or an extended starter test. A normal starter test will do it without you disabling it from starting. An extended start test will make you disable it from starting. So I'm going to show you, you know how to do an extended. You unplug something, make it not start. I'm going to show you it's normal test, okay? I'm going to hit normal. Do I have the ECM unplugged right now? Okay. So I'm going to hit normal. You hit yes. Start engine. disable it and make it crank longer. So in the, in the field, it's better to do an extended test because it's going to be more of a real, because there's, there's no way you can really know for sure that the starter will okay, in my opinion, for that quick of a test. Okay? Alright, so it passed. I can, I can print that. I can save it, whatever I want to do. Go back. Do uh, you want to do an extended test? Pretty easy. Let's do it. Let's pick starter test again. This time I'm going to pick extended. Place high amp probe on the negative. See, I didn't have the amp probe connected. It didn't tell me to. It just tell me to connect it now. So connect it to the uh, negative or positive cable. It's got a little arrow on here. It says plus this way. So if I'm putting this on the negative, I put it away from the negative post. If I put it on the positive, I can put it toward the positive post. Okay? I want you to put it on the negative so it's going to be away from the negative. <laughs> Alright, so it says place high amp probe on the negative or positive cable. Yes to continue. Disable ignition. Well, it doesn't really have any ignition, but it's, it means make it not start. Alright. Yes to continue. Start cranking the engine. Y'all tell me when something changes on that. Ready? Go. That's an extended starter test. It can print that. Uh, go ahead and hit more and give you actually how many amps we were pulling out of it. Okay? Alright, go back. Now we're going to go to the alternator test. Make the thing start. Now, for the alternator test, you just hit yes. Place the high probe on the alternator output cable. So I could leave it here, but it's, it's telling me to put it up here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it up here, okay? Put it on an output cable there. Hit yes to continue. Start the engine.
power up engines. It says alternator test passed. It's all through the test there. If you go and hit more, you can get the results of that test. Uh, if you hit print, it'll print the more detailed results. Okay? That's how you use it as a uh, battery tester, a starting system tester, and a charging output tester. What if I just want to use this to charge a battery? You go all the way back to the beginning. That's the startup screen. And the on-off switch is back here in the back, by the way. It's just a rocker switch on the back left of the machine. So we'll turn the machine on. If you want to use this to charge, and this is a good charger, wait until it comes all the way up. Now, do you want to run a system test, an individual test, charging menu, or results menu? If I want to charge, I want to go to the charging menu. Scroll around to the charging menu. Is it a conventional or an AGM? It's conventional. You want to do automatic, manual, trickle, or crank assist. Automatic, it's going to take over and charge it up until it thinks it's charged up. Manual, it's going to say how long do I want to charge for. A trickle is just going to put a slow rate of charge in for a long time. And crank assist is if I've got a dead battery, it's going to put this thing in a situation where it should start to bid. That's the four options there. So let's, let's just pick, uh, pick automatic. So, it's checking connections, and it's just going to sit there and charge that battery up until it thinks it's fully charged. All right. Pretty smart machine. The key, it takes some of the control out of your hand. But it does basically the same thing as this, plus it, it charges your battery. Any questions?